Hey folks, this is Mike with the Quality Sportsman. Today I'm at the range and we're testing the all new Arkin EP5 Gen 2 5 35 556. This is their newest offering in the Arkin lineup, and I wanted to see if this punches above its weight like all their other optics do. Let's go. Hey folks, uh, before we get into this review, uh, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, which is really cool. I'm excited to hit that mark. Thanks for all the support. Uh, hit that bell notification uh, icon as well if you want to stay tuned and catch all the next videos I put out on long range uh, shooting, how to's, and gear reviews. Thanks. All right, folks. Well, today's a little different. We're going to do a uh, review while we're at the range uh, shooting. First, I'm going to get this thing zeroed, uh, see how I like the features initially, and then I'm going to run a few PRS barricade style drills. Uh, I think that's really going to uh, give me an idea of how clear this glass is and overall how I like it. Um, again, this is Arkin's uh, newest drop, uh, the EP5 Gen 2. Uh, they had an EP5, but I believe it was uh, only went up to like 25 power or something like that. So this one goes all the way up to 35 power. Um, so I got my hands on this Arkin and uh, let's go ahead and get this thing zeroed and see how we like it. One quick tip for you bolt gun guys, uh, you can actually do a quick and dirty bore sight at the range to make sure you get on paper by taking your bolt out. In behind the gun, getting that on target through the barrel and then making sure that your sight lines up. All right, so now that I got this thing bore sighted, uh, let's go ahead and get a quick zero. This is my uh, six millimeter Creedmoor PRS gun. While we're getting our zero, I'll talk you through some of the uh, features of this scope. So like I said, it is a seven to 35 by 56. It's got a 34 millimeter tube, does claim to have a zero stop. So once I get my zero here, we'll uh, pull this turret off and see how that works. Uh, it's got a parallax setting from zero to infinity and it's got illumination settings right here. Let's turn that on. When I zero, I uh, really like to zero on, on very high power um, to get a very precise hold. The only problem is when you zoom all the way in, the eye relief becomes a little bit challenging. All right, got a pretty good group going. Um, let's see where I'm at. It's an interesting reticle. It's got pretty big numbers. So about one and a half mils low and one mil right. One and a half. And when these turrets are nice and smooth, the, uh, the parallax is a little tight. It's hard to tell where the, uh, where the arrow is for the parallax. The alum dial is super tight. I don't even know. What's going on there? Oh, I can see it a little bit. That's very weak illumination. This uh, magnification ring is backwards from every other scope I've owned. So I'm a little, it's, it's going to take some getting used to. But while we're on the topic of zeroing, uh, you know, three is like the absolute minimum group size. If you really want to get dialed in, uh, you know, four or five shots, measure where you're at, move it to the center, confirm, and, and that should be good. Um, but make sure you're getting a good group because if you have poor fundamentals and marksmanship, if your gun's not that accurate, you don't really know exactly where you're moving the center of your group to, or, or how can you know if you don't know where the center is? So, uh, that's absolutely critical. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say three is the minimum, uh, I'm not saying I have done one shot, moved it, done another shot to confirm. It depends on how confident you are in the gun, uh, and how much room for error you're willing to accept. So let's go ahead and confirm. And then we'll zero out the turrets and see how that works. All right, well, we got it zeroed. Uh, wish I could show you through the scope. Let me grab the phone scope and, or the all in, see how we can see it. All right, you can take a look at that top left diamond and see my final zero group. I mean, that is a nice tight group. All right, now, whenever you're buying a uh, nice first focal plane long range scope, uh, you expect that the turrets can be zeroed out. Uh, Some have what's called a zero stop, which means you can't go down below where your zero is, which is nice because technically if you dialed too low, you could get back to zero and be 10 mils below your zero, which is, is not good. So uh, let's go ahead and figure this out. All right, so uh, setting this back to zero is pretty easy. There's 
three silver screws around the side of the turret. I loosened those and it just slipped and then I tightened it down. Now there's a zero stop screw up top. So I believe what this does is if you screw this down once you get it set, you won't be able to go below that. Oh yeah. And that's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, some other scopes have shims and things like that. Okay, so as you can see here, um, this is the screw on the top that I was talking about. Uh, I can dial up, let's say I'm gonna shoot uh, 700 yards, that's like four and a half mils for me. Uh, then I want to just zero it out, I can quickly screw it down and it gets really tight here for that last click. And now I know I'm at my zero, it would be hard for me to go beyond that because I tighten the screw down, which is obviously just a mechanical blocker. All right, now that we've got this zeroed out, let's go ahead and confirm it distance. Again, I'm shooting a six creed here. I got a uh, 108 grain uh, Hornady ELD match, which I'm shooting about uh, 2950 feet per second. Okay, so first I'm just gonna hold over, shooting a 300 yard, uh, 300 yards, a maybe 10 inch circle plate. Impact, dead center, awesome. Okay, let's go to 500 yards. This should be about two, two mils for me. Or sorry, two and a half mils. I'll have to get my calculator out here in a second if I miss. Again, I don't love that I can't really see where this parallax is indexing. That's kind of to put a little dab of light out there or something. Two and a half mils, a little bit more wind there. Let's do a half mil wind hold. Impact. Hey, how's it going? Making a video? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a little review on this uh, Arkin scope. So let's see, we hit at 300, we hit at 500. Um, let's see how we do at 7. 12 power. Let's dial for this. I'm not going to hold 4.5 mils. Oh, I was a little high on that. Just going to guess on my dope here. But actually, this is a good test because when you're shooting with these scopes, you need to be able to spot your impacts, see which uh, hash mark it was on, and then adjust. All right, I'm going to try for that right uh, small square plate or small ipsic, whichever that is. And this is 700 yards. Impact. All right. All right, let's go for that small round plate, 700 yards. Impact. All right, uh, you know, so far this thing is not bad. There's a few little quirks about it. Um, the alum is, is not great. Um, the magnification knob for me, it feels backwards. Uh, normally I'm pushing it to the right to go up. Uh, this is backwards. Oh, let me flip this around and show you. So if I was to push it to the right or clockwise, it'll actually go down. Um, so again, that's nothing wrong with the scope. That's just the way it's configured. Um, sure, a lot of scopes are different. All the scopes I run seem to be, you know, pushing it clockwise will uh, send you up in magnification. Uh, the turret's pretty nice. Um, Shut with light here. The, they're not super tight. tight. They're nice, big, oversized. Like a lot of folks with other, even other high dollar scopes, you'll see they have to go get some sight tapes to put on there that are you know way higher um, or better to see these are nice and big uh, the clicks are tactile I can easily dial and it does have that zero stop which is pretty nice all right folks as you can see I dragged this barricade out here I'm gonna do a mock PRS stage for a little bit of practice L let's go standing kneeling and low kneeling and I'm gonna do three five and seven hundred yards from each position Ooh.
pack. Ooh, there's a target indicator on that. That's awesome. Got it, got it, got it. Uh-oh. Impact. All right, I'm going to have to hold. Okay. Well, I think I ended up with seven out of nine. Let's go ahead and finish up. On the seven hundred yard target. Impact. Overall, that went pretty well. I ran it clean up until I started to run out of time. Um, I think the glass did pretty well. Let's see, I was on 12 power and I was able to hit that full lipstick no problem at 700 yards. Um, so I know that, you know, some folks will say, hey, 700 yards is nowhere near how far you should be shooting with the scope. Uh, you know, that's what we have here. So that's what we're working with today. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, what I want to do, since this is a 7 to 35 scope, is shoot it on max magnification at 700 yards uh, to see how well I can spot my shots, kind of get some estimate of glass clarity. Got quite a bit of mirage today, just making it challenging. Let's send it. Impact. All right, zoomed all the way in. Uh, initially, I thought I couldn't really get it focused, but um, kind of realized that the parallax is a little finicky. So once I got that dialed in, I could see uh, the eye box is still a little tight, but you know, again, when you're shooting that far, I think you're gonna generally be in a stable position, be able to get your eye relief exactly where you need it to. So uh, not bad. Um, one more thing to comment is the reticle is really big at 35. Um, but it's super clear, like if I was going to shoot holdovers, I know exactly where I'm at. Um, so I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's pretty decent. I'll, I'll throw a picture of the reticle on the overlay here on the video. All right, folks. Well, uh, we got some traffic on the range there. So I moved out and I uh, wanted to finish up this review. Um, so overall, I, I think I'm pretty impressed uh, as per usual with the Arc and Optics. Uh, this, you know, what I did was I... Uh, zoomed in to 35 i normally wouldn't shoot 35 power at 700 yards i put a few rounds down range got really comfortable with that magnification initially i was a little disappointed but i realized the parallax was a little finicky at that distance and once i got that dialed in it was very clear i was able to spot my shots exactly where i was hitting on the plate on a small plate at 700 yards on a hot day with a lot of wind and things like that um so you know it, at this price point i, I think uh, you can get it for around 700 bucks now um, there's always a 25% off on the Arkin website, but after tax and things like that, it'll come to about 700. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty impressed. And I think this is a good option for folks that really want to get into long range shooting, but don't want to go up to something like a Vortex Razor or Night Force Attack or things like that, that are going to be 2000 plus. Um, so I, again, I, I could run this for PRS. I have a higher quality scope and Athlon Cronus. Um, so I'm not going to. Uh, but I'm going to keep this in my arsenal uh, for long range shooting, especially if I need something for 35 power, if I need a loaner, things like that. Sorry, my tripod broke, so I'm uh, kind of holding the camera here. So, uh, yeah, so uh, again, the illumination, I got to test another battery, another couple batteries. Uh, very underwhelmed with that on a sunny day. Um, the turrets are really nice. Um, the three screws are an interesting method, but the zero stop screw is really cool. That's super easy to set up. The, the magnification ring, I think it's backwards. All the Arkin scopes are set up that way. So that's fine. That's something you're just going to have to get used to. Um, you know, the, the construction is very sturdy. Like I, I mounted it, you know, pretty quickly. It held zero throughout the day. I could hold over, I could dial. I mean, it was kind of everything you want in a long range scope. Um, at a pretty decent price point. So I'm not gonna go ahead and say that this is better than the scopes that cost more. Uh, I don't think that is the case, but I do think this is a very uh, competitive offering in its price range. Um, I, I wouldn't hesitate to buy this if you couldn't spend more money. However, I do think a little bit more glass clarity and uh, things like that uh, will serve you better for long range shooting over time if you can spend more, if you can go up to something like the Vortex Razor. Um, or even the Athlon Cronus, which is kind of the midway point uh, in that $1,500 price range. 
Again, all the features, all the functionality, all the usability of it was very nice. Uh, the turrets were nice, smooth, but tactile. I could hold, I could dial, whichever. The reticle is very nice. It kind of has bigger numbers, so you can easily see where you're at. A um, couple small gripes, the parallax uh, indicator and seeing exactly where it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to put a little white out there just to... Um, to see it so I can quickly index the parallax, but you know, you can also look through the scope and get that focused. Overall, I think if uh, you're looking to get into long range shooting, uh, if you are doing a budget build, if you need a loaner scope or a backup, I think this is a really solid option. Something like this would be perfectly adequate for uh, PRS, for you folks getting into that. Uh, that's something that I do, uh, you know, that I've started this year and I really enjoy it. Well, I think that, again, while I think there's better quality this will get you started. So again, Arkin comes out uh, with something that, you know, is kind of in its own class in a way as far as quality uh, average out over price point. Um, I, you know, I, I think this is a great option in that price range. I don't necessarily think it's better than things above its price range. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button as well. And if you want to stay tuned for more long range content, please go ahead and hit that bell notification so you know as soon as I drop a new video. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on The Quality Sportsman.